Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. So, today I just wanted to start a new playlist and it's going to be a power supply design from the power cord to the DC output. Uh, probably for an audio amplifier or, you know, for anything. But anyway, we're, we're going to, yeah, probably design this one for an audio amplifier. Um, so, to start with, this is the power cord. Now, uh, it seems pretty straightforward and pretty easy and probably is. Uh, the one thing I wanted to suggest though is to think about what you're doing when you connect your power cord. You're plugging it into the wall. Um, you might be going through a power conditioner, I don't know, but if you're plugging it directly into the wall and even if you're going through a power conditioner, it's nice to know what is going on on that end of the power cord and it kind of helps you decide what to do downstream and how to choose that power cord. So, for instance, the power company sends power to your house, of course, and it sends high voltage and it gets dropped down to your transformers, eventually down to 120 volts to your house. Now, when it comes to your house, there's actually two lines, right? Line one, line two, um, they're both 120 volts and it's basically split phase. It's not really two, uh, two phase, it's really a split phase. It's a transformer winding on the transformer that gets dropped down from some high voltage and it's, it gets dropped down to 240 volts and it has a center tap so that you have two 120 volts from the center tap and your power panel has two you know rows of breakers, right? Two columns and each column has uh, a line on one side and a line on the other side, the neutral down the middle, okay? Well, where that power comes into your house, there's a big old breaker switch, right? And, you know, that's an important thing, right? Disconnect yourself from the power line. The other thing that's very important that happens out there, extremely important, is that that neutral is bonded to earth ground, okay? So it has, you have a, uh, you know, ground stake, uh, what is it, 8, 10 foot? I forget what it is now. But anyway, it's supposed to be, I think it's under 25 ohms for NEC. They're supposed to measure that when they uh, pound it in. I don't think they ever do, but they're supposed to. And probably rarely it's going to be as low ohms as it's supposed to be. And if not, then they're supposed to pound another ground stake. It's probably why they don't measure it. They don't want to keep doing that. I think they're supposed to go up to three stakes before they call it good. Um, Anyway, so that's what's going on out there, and that is so that every power, um, you know, it's a it's a multi-grounded system. You know, the the neutral on all these transformers are all uh, referenced to earth ground. Okay, it's not a great ground. Uh, a lot of people put too much belief in ground, and you know, anyway, they it's a, there's a lot of confusion about ground in general. Um, that is earth ground, and in your house, your, you know, back, back in the day, you had just two prongs, right? Just your line and neutral. Um, so now they have three, and that was to keep houses from burning down, basically. Um, it also is a safety protection. If you're in your laundry room, and um, some of the, the most common failures are moving parts, right? Like motors, electric motors. So you have one in your laundry machine, and you have one in your dry dryer, okay? So along came washers and dryers, and let's say one of those motors shorted to the stator. Well, it just keeps on running probably. And, uh, and you got, you know, say 120 volts on your, um, on your chassis of that device say the washing machine so you walk in and of course they're right next to each other and you touch them both and uh, one could be a ground potential one could be a line potential and all of a sudden you're getting electrocuted so um, you're supposed to tie all those metals to that earth ground and that way it keeps them all at the same potential and that is why that green wire is called safety ground because it has to be able to carry enough current in case there is a short to that chassis to pull open your breaker, okay? That's, that's the deal, that's what's going on out there. And you can have a neutral kind of 
uh, corrode on that transformer or at your house and you have loose neutral and if that happens then you kind of have a, you, you know an open circuit there right well you know you, what happens is an open circuit you end up with your full voltage across your open circuit so that's 240 volts okay that's dangerous that's why MOV circuits we're gonna cover MOVs as part of this um, and by the way thumbs up to uh, the fried meal for uh, suggesting this I think it's a great idea but the MOV um, that thing is can be very dangerous when they break down and they start burning it burns like a flare they'll burn through your PCB board they'll burn through everything okay so you want to make sure if you do use an MOV that you use it correctly and uh, I'm gonna say that uh, most times those things are not used correctly so uh, you got to be careful with those okay we're gonna cover those so right now it's the power cord okay hey by the way uh, you may want to stay tuned because we're gonna have a little talk about this guy and at some point in the video I'm gonna have this little talk and you'll be happy to tuned in to see what that's all about all right let's stay tuned let's get to the video all right guys so now we're talking about the power cords right uh, two prong three prong another important thing about the power cord is the gauge of wire right so these are usually plugged into your wall or power conditioner but if they're plugged into your wall uh, most of those power strips are protected with the 15 amp circuit breaker so you want to be able to handle 15 amps to pull that circuit breaker off and uh, even if you only have a 100 watt device the power cord should be capable of protecting yourself from your power problems okay because you can have a short somewhere in the power cord somewhere in the circuit before the power switch and uh, you know if you have a power line problem um, high voltage line falling on the power line the neutral coming loose any of those kind of things you know somebody runs into the transformer outside you know car accident right uh, lightning whatever um, the safest thing to protect your equipment you're not using is just not even have it plugged in and if it is plugged in have the power switch turned off now in some cases these power switches like in this case for the scope it puts it doesn't really cut off the power um, it just puts it into some hibernation mode um, a lot of things are built that way these days so hitting the power switch does not open up a switch and take you off um, from the grid the power grid so pulling the plug out of the wall it's the safest way to do that um, anyway so why the choice why would we choose three prongs or two prongs okay yeah you might be curious as to why we even have two prongs anymore because didn't we put that third prong that ground that green wire um, in the wall for a reason well then how come that guy exists and you know in t today's world maybe we see these popping up quite a bit why is that so that is the big question please write in tell me what your answer is and you don't have to necessarily be correct I might not be correct um, but you know I, I'm the guy that gets to judge <laughs> anyway um, so the right answer or the best answer answers will be um, someone is gonna win this Tektronics DMM 157 all right and give this away uh, I've got several of them so why not part with one thought this might be a good time to to do that just went over a hundred subscribers eh, kind of small channel right but anyway that's just an excuse maybe but um, now also write in what you think the best method for me to choose I just p pick someone or do do I pick maybe the top five and you know write them down and pull one name out of the box how do I do that so tell me what, how you think I should do that selection uh, and depending on where you live 
we might have to figure out some shipping methods where I might have to ask for some some dollars here. Um, so I keep on buying equipment, got all these amplifiers and all these power supplies I'm going to be reviewing, and I actually want to buy another scope for uh, for review. Uh, so, gosh, might not be able to cover the shipping, especially if you don't live close. Um, if you live out of the country, for instance. Um, anyway, that's what we're going to do. DMM 157 Tektronics. And by the way, Tektronics, if you don't, if you're not familiar with uh, their multimeters, they're every bit as good and they, very, they look very similar to a fluke, right? Uh, they don't make them anymore as far as I know. Their Tektronics and Fluke are both owned or were owned by the same company. I think they still are. Uh, I think they've separated divisions or something, but um, Tektronics, I almost believe that at one point they were trying different uh, meters formats um, like this TX3. Really like this meter. This uh, it's TX3 here, and uh, some of these screens are a little bit scratched up. I saw a video one time, a guy showing how to remove those. I gotta find that video again because it looked like a pretty easy method to re uh, to make them nice and shiny again, uh, get rid of some of the superficial scratches. But anyway, back to the difference between these and flukes. I think the Tektronics were trying a different look. You know, this big display has different lines. It, it's just kind of the way it's constructed. And I think they kind of tested the market before they put them into the Fluke line. Um, the DMM916 has a lot of the same features as the later released uh, Fluke 189 series. So, yeah, I'm kind of curious about that. And here's another Tektronics DMM870. Anyway, I kind of get sidetracked, but uh, just wanted to tell you, very good meter. Yeah, very good. Has a uh, microamp scale, has one, two, let's see, what is it, four, holy cow, has four different microfarad uh, scales. And then, it, and actually I reviewed this meter with some of these other ones um, on, on uh, how accurate the capacitance measurements were compared to each other. And so you might be able to see that video. But there's also, uh, Two different micro well there's a microamp scale a milliamp and an amp and you have a microamp input an amp input and then of course your common and your volt ohm uh, diode input here so it does check diodes as well so has a reset hold and, and range button and a nice little meter got your kickstand on it got this little guy here that you can hang it on you know hang it by this little Deal, little thing where you put the probes, you know, stores your leads. So that's what we're gonna do. Hey, thanks for watching the first in this uh, series, and uh, and that's the power cord. Okay. The question is, why do we want a three prong over a two prong, or vice versa? What are the trade offs? When do you need a three prong, and when can you get away with the two prong? Okay, so what's the difference between them and when, when can you use them in your application, all right? So let me, let me see your answers and this will be fun. Okay, that's the power cord. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, so this is the meter, the DMM157. All right, guys, so answer the question, be a subscriber, and... Tell me how we should, give me your ideas on how we should pick the winner. And this is the, this is the little guy we're going to send out. Okay. Um, all right. Hey, thanks for watching.